comparison of the natural lung and with the artificial lung what is the life of the natural lung and what is the life of the man made so this ecmo actually buys the time until the native heart or lung recovers in two weeks so actually the target of the ecmo is to buy the time meantime the intensivist or the nurses or the life health professionals working with the patient having the sick lung or sick heart so the time we are getting actually we are buying the time so the, the heart or the lung can recover we will talk about lung so lung recover so actually this is the time by the acting procedure and it can be the destination and it can be the bridge to transplant so nowadays we are doing the bridge to transplant even we are doing the transplant lung transplant and very soon we are going to start the heart transplant which is in, in, in action and we are having a few cases already are going to be discussed and going to be operated soon if the issue is the donors is happy to donate the heart so see this is your native heart and this is the pump what is the correlation of the pump of the heart the role of the heart is to pump the pumping so what we are doing with the roller pump we are pumping blood to the body we are getting blood sucking blood and returning back to the body <coughs> so we are replacing the function of the heart uh, and if there is two type of pumps there is two type of pump. the pump which i show you is the roller pump where we need to have piece of tube with the angles they push the blood toward there and this is the centrifugal pump so actually we have two type of uh, sorry uh, pumps the pump which is using in the atmo is your centrifugal pump and it is preload and afterload dependent this is preload and afterload dependent but the roller pump is not a preload and afterload dependent so this is the reason we are using the roller pump in our heart surgery and we use the centrifugal pump mostly for the long term bypasses like an atmo left hand right pass or l band or y band or rfit so normally the pump which is going to be used is the centrifugal pump and it is preload and afterload dependent so we talk about the heart now we are going to talk about the lung so lung function is to oxygenate ventilate as we already get to go through with that so we are replacing the function of this organ with man made organ okay so wait, sorry ah. so what the things we required for the man made ecmo we need of course we need a disposables we need a non disposables so what are the disposables of course we need a catheters the two type of catheters one is the the excess catheter and the other one is the return catheter the blood which is sucking from the body through the excess and the blood which is returning back to the body through the return cannula so then we have the disposable cannulas we need a see marker machines in the anode this is your ecmo machine before it was a huge machine now this is your ecmo machine is very portable and friendly user compact machine all feature as buttons like a pre post uh, tmp temperature all in hemoglobin hematocrit so everything was in a small machine which can be lifted by your single hand but the hard like machine was not possible to lift with a single hand so so then of course to maintain the oxygen sorry so how can we oxygenate how can we provide oxygen to the body through the air we supply it like normally in a ventilator you have the ventilators but now your ventilator is not enough for the patient's lung so now you need something which because this is outside the body to so also outside the body you need to oxygenate you need to provide the oxygen you need to remove the co2 so this is all the sequence air we supply it so with the help of this we maintain the oxygenation of the patients outside the body and 
this is your warmer to keep the temperature normal normally when you going to take the blood outside the body it's going to be hypothermic so to maintain the temperature we need a uh, warmer uh, so of course we are going to talk about the, the PVC is the tubing so without this tubing not see this is the tubing this is oxygenated from this it is connected with the patients so we suck the blood through the patients they are coming into the oxygenated from the oxygenated from the patients uh, the, the beauty of this tubes are this is bioimportant PVC tubes we are not the material we are using is a PVC is a polyvinyl chloride material uh, it is bioimportant with the albumin that happens which increases in biocompatibility of the affected circuit and the lifespan of the circuit is around the 30 days this is by the manufacturer but it can go more than 30 days it's not mean that after 30 days you are going to remove but it can be less it's not that the, the, the manufacturer mentioned this is 30 days so it will go to no it depends on the patient's physiology and hematology it may be going to be change the circuit within a one day or within two days it can be go for like two months you don't need to change the circuit so the, actually the lifespan of the circuit and oxygenator is like the 30 days uh, then uh, see so normally there is two type of cannula we are using uh, the first cannula we are using is the excess cannula excess cannula is a multi hole cannula with the reinforce the, there is the less chance to be kinky in case of manual, uh, mobilization of the, the patient so this is the reinforce a long catheter like a 60 centimeter with the multi hole so that we can suck more volume from the body to the oxygenator and uh, uh, there is a ch less chance for the kicking because the reinforced and the positioning of the I the IBC cannula uh, is in the within the hepatic IBC if you are going to penetrate the patient for the femoral. So if your ECMO normally we are doing the ECMO like fem fem, so for your IBC your excess cannula is going to be inserted through the femoral vein and it is going to the within the hepatic IBC. You should not go above the hepatic. So to reduce the recirculation, that we will study the recirculation problem later on. But now, if the IBC cannula or excess cannula is using to suck the blood from the body into the oxygen. Why we never say venous cannula? Because in the term of the IBC excess cannula, uh, in a cardiac surgery we used to say venous and arterial cannula. But here we can't say the venous or arterial because this is something with the BB also. So never say that uh, this is venous cannula. You will be confused to, to yourself and to the, even the team members. So better to use the term access and uh, return. So this one is your return cannula. Return cannula will go very far below the and so 50 centimeter length. Uh, they having the few holes. Uh, this way, uh, this cannula is not a multi hole. It's having a few holes on the tip actually because we don't want a multi hole. Otherwise, there is a chance of recirculation. So we always go with the cannula and the, the hole only in the tip, not the multi hole for the long hole. No. And then this is thin hole, and of course, this is the wide hole. So the position of this cannula is in the, the right atrium. The difference of the positioning of your excess and return is along from 8 to 10 centimeter. So if it is Less than 8 to 10 centimeters, there is a chance of recirculation. So, you, instead of providing oxygenated blood to the body, you are taking back to the system and you will see in your parameters your SP2, your saturation is the highest, your SP2 is the higher side. So, the color of the tubes are the same. But the patient side, the patient you will find maybe the saturated patient is not the same. So, of course, how you will check by the echo, with the x ray, you have to position your camera. So, you can analyze in the, within the right area. Your excess cannula is over there. The yes, thank you so much. And it is about the 8 to 10 centimeter of the excess cannula. So, this one is the actually the if we give an object, this is your excess cannula, this is coming this one. So, we are sucking, this is the pump, this is the motor, which is helping to suck the blood. And with the air mixer blender, we are oxygenating, providing oxygen and moving CO2 through with the CO2 gas. And the human oxygenation take place and then return back to the water. So the, the flow dynamics, we are going to talk about the flow dynamics. So see how the blood is coming, going back and see the change of the color because of the flow. We suck blue blood, we suck blue blood from the body 
and it provides oxygen through the air mixer blended with the oxygenator with a specific and the, with the pink blood or the red blood, oxygen blood is going back to the tissues. So in this, we are monitoring three pressures are very very important for for the ECMO and then whenever you initiate ECMO, always consider your three pressure is very important. If you ignore these three pressures, there is a chance in the mid of your shift you can maybe lead a disaster. So, what are the three main pressures? Number one pressure is your excess pressure. Why we are focused on excess pressure? Because when we sucking blood from the body with the kinetic force, when the magnet with the coupling of the motor is sucking with the higher RPM, there is a chance of shear rate shear stress and it can lead the destruction of the cells and you will find a hemolysis mostly. So you have to maintain the, the flow and the pressures uh, within the normal range. So excess pressure is very important. Sometimes your patient is a hypovolemic, you are sucking more and which can lead for uh, cavitation and you can make a hemolysis. Here, this is clear water. You have to chance to overflow and then return back the flow to the patient. So, the excess pressure is your P1 pressure, is very important. Number two is your P2 pressure. P2 pressure is your pre membrane pressure, and pre membrane pressure is higher than your post membrane pressure. Anyone answer why? Yes, there will be the pressure. So, it will be the, this is the reason. P and P3 difference is your P and P pressure which after you will get a resistance here. So if you are for example 150 pressure with the resistance your pressure will be something like a 1, here is 150 and 130. So 20 will be the delta P, transmembrane pressure and transmembrane pressure is the pressure who will lead you, who guide you, your membrane is failing or it is okay. So ideally your TMP pressure should be the double than your baseline and should not exceed more than the 50 millimeter per So we already talked, so I am going to go through access, B, post, trans, and when we already talked, so we need to go. Uh, so see, what is the ideal negative pressure? What is the ideal negative pressure? Six steps. That's six steps. What should be the ideal negative pressure on ECMO? Excess pressure? Actually, the ideal negative pressure for the ECMO is minus 60 millimeter per day. But normally, the cut down for the uh, excess pressure is minus 100 millimeter per day. But if it is go beyond the minus 100 millimeter per day with the higher RPM, there is a chance of suctioning and to increase the shear and shear stress, which can regulate your destruction of the cells and hemolysis. So it should not go, should not be more than the hundred. If it is more than the hundred, you have to reduce the RPM, or either you have to dilate your patient and increase the volume. It's not bad volume to reduce the RPM. Sometimes you need a higher flow. So what you can do, you can increase your you can go through with your CVP line. If the patient still need a volume, you give some volume and dilate the patient and keep it the same and just decrease your excess pressure. See, if the patient have less volume and you are in having the higher RPM there, there is a chance of check trick. Check trick means the fluctuating of the access line, it means there is less volume, the space of the tube is bigger, either you need to decrease the tube or either you have to increase the volume of the patient. So the chattering can lead the cavitations. So what you can do is you have to do that. So what are the reasons? So these are the reasons. Number one, hypovolemia. Number two, Less sedation, sometimes your patient is awake. Number three, shivering, mobilization, and keeping with the 
chill or partial incognito. This ambient. This is not only that I do believe here. So if you are the back side nurse or the, as a physician, if there is a, a higher RPM, a higher excess pressure, don't go directly go to give the volume. First you need to go through with all these steps. Is there is a patient in radial hypovolemic or not? Is the patient is properly uh, sedated or not? Shivering, mobilization, things from the tube. So go through with it. Sometime your height, your machine's height is better also. The type of transportation you will find is the higher uh, access pressure because machine is more power to suck and the patient is on the lower side and your machine is on the side. Positioning of the control is also. So if you ignore all this, there is a chance of cavitation and cavitation leads for So I will discuss if your PM is more than 50, you need to change your oxygen internet and go with your gas and the formula and equations. Okay? So you will find see this is the reason of your PM in your face, resistance and you don't the blocks. So you have the daily inspection, check the oxygen internet and uh, uh, find if there is any uh, clots, clots like that is unusable to look at and show you the that there is a uh, clot formation or fibrin formation in the oxygen that is going to be the field of your oxygenation or failure of the oxygen that you are really to be changing the oxygen uh, in, in, in an elective way, not in like a, a volatile sort of situation. So what you have to do to prevent the this one trend of TMP can be put in a daily shift TMP check. Uh, check the PO2 post oxy of the uh, patient on every shift. You are not in a, in a, in a, in a day once. And then take the gas transfer, if it is the flow and the oxygenation is according to the flow or not. If it is left, then you have to change. And then you have to do the side of the membrane. In the side of the membrane means when you are running continuous the, the machine. So there is a chance of condensation in the membrane because of because the continuous motor is running. And then it is going to block your membrane. And there is a chance of uh, the stuck of the oxygen and is not diffusing properly. And then you have to do the side. You increase the sleep gas flow so that the gas flow is going to push all the water from the oxygenator to the floor and your membrane will be free from the water and then you will find the color change in your uh, the tubings. So normally we are using the Mackey oxygenator and then we get the different oxygenator. But for the Mackey, uh, we have the flow chart with us. The, this formula is for all oxygenators, the post oxygen content minus pre oxygen content because present uh, pump flow in 2 to 10. This is the formula, the fixed formula. If your result is 200 and above, we are okay with the same flow. If it is less, then we have to change the oxygen. Uh, then, uh, this. Normally, this is what we already showed you in the previous. Two so, only that's what we just going to do. So normally what we are doing here is we are doing the, in a VB we are doing a fan pump cannulation and fan jugular cannulation. This is our routine frequency of the cannulations. So the first priority is we always go with the fan pump and sometimes we use the fan jugular. So there is a third cannula, we have the Avalon or we can say a dual uh, lunar cannula which is going to be inserted from the jugular and uh, this cannula works as excess and in the the return part also. So the positioning of your uh, return is, uh, especially if the excess is in toward the tricuspid valve, well, suck the volume and then, uh, the, the return is toward the tricuspid valve, sorry, and so that we can provide the oxygen to the uh, heart and it will pump to the lungs and oxygenation like this and the, the sucking through the, the IVC as we see. So see the position, this is excess, yes, uh, we are getting from the peak in the IVC and this is SVC and this one you will find out the whole here. See the return and the, the, the position of this one is toward the tricuspid line. See this is the actual position, you can see uh, we are sucking from here, we are sucking in the inlet and we are returning back to the toward the 
So types of uh, this, uh, this, uh, how, how it works will come into the very important purpose of the part of the slide uh, for the whole this presentation. Uh, the pump magnet couples with the